welcome to A Word for This Day podcast. I'm Jory Schaefer, the show's host and creator, and it is my joy and my pleasure to welcome you today. Welcome back to all you regular listeners. I'm so thankful that you are here. Thank you for coming on this journey with me. Thank you for coming back day after day. And welcome to anyone who's found us for the first time. It's no accident that you are here, friend. God just keeps... Um, adding new people every day to uh, those who are downloading this podcast, and I just thank him and give him praise for that. And uh, our goal here is, number one, to give God the glory, and number two, to be able to um, encourage and show you that you can know more of him. You can know his word. You can understand the things of him, not because of what I say, but because of his Holy Spirit that guides us into the understanding, into truth. And his word is truth. The sum of all of God's word is truth, scripture tells us. And so I'm just excited to be here with you. I wish I knew who all of you were, uh, but I unfortunately don't. God has it that way uh, for a reason. Uh, but I'm just thankful that you're here and know that I continue to pray for you regularly, that the Lord will draw you closer to him, that he'll give you more of a desire to know him and his word, and that you will be deliberate and intentional about spending time with him. Please consider sharing this podcast with your friends, family, neighbors, strangers, just anyone else who you think may receive a blessing from it. And know that I love to hear from you. I love to hear what God's doing in your life as you're spending more time for, with Him. Remember that we're doing um, a journaling uh, activity this year, or I'm doing it. I've done this for the last several years, but I decided to record it this year on short form video so you can find it on uh, some of the social media platforms. If you look for a word for this day podcast, um, or you just look up my name, Dr. Jory Schaefer, you may find it. Uh, and I would invite you, even if you didn't start on January 1, I'm journaling just a little bit on each day's verse. It's just a short thing. It's a short practice I do every day. I do that to show you kind of my, uh, little statements of prayer and praise to the Lord as just an example. And it's a good way for you to focus each day, to think about his goodness, think about his grace, think about what he's done for us. All of his word points to that. In one way or the other, we can always go back to the goodness, the faithfulness, um, the forgiveness, the mercy, the deliverance, the protection, the provision, um, the salvation that we have from God. We also see his holiness, his righteousness, his justness, and that there is going to be a day when... Um, He's going to make that big separation when he's going to come and say, either you're for me or you're against me. And so uh, I just love to be able to do that each day, and I would invite you to join along. All right, our verse for the day for Jan it's not January, March the 3rd, March the 3rd, 2024, comes from Paul's letter of 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3, and it reads as follows from the English Standard Version. But the Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. Oh, friends, what a promise. You need to write this down, stick it on a, a sticky note or an index card, and this is a good memory verse. It is a promise to hold on to. It is truth. Of course, all of God's word is truth. But I'm excited for us to park here and see what we can learn today. You know, if you've been on this journey with me for very long, this is the time that I think it's wise for us to look at where we are in the scripture, look at who may have written this uh, book or letter, what was going on, to whom he was writing. And that helps us to get the appropriate context, the appropriate background, so we can uh, apply this to our lives. But I love this scripture. Um, this is one I'm going to write down again and, and just stick on my desk, stick in my car. Uh, this is uh, one that we must remember. It's such a wonderful promise. Um, but when we 
think about where we are in the scripture, we know that this is a letter of Paul's because the beginning of the letter opens up in this way. In Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse uh, 1, it says, Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul tells us that he wrote it and that Sylvanus or Silas and Timothy are with him. He doesn't really give his credentials like he does in many of his other letters. You know how we talk about how he sometimes will say he's a servant of Christ or he was called to be an apostle by the will of God. He really doesn't say that in this letter. He just tells us who he is. But this is his second letter to those believers at Thessalonica. And we see that um, if we look, I believe it's in Acts chapter 17. uh, It talks about his time in Thessalonica. And I would encourage you to go back and read that. But before we um, get uh, much further into that, if this is your first time listening, Paul was an apostle. He was appointed by God to be a messenger of the gospel. And he was not in that same apostle group as the apostles mentioned in the gospels, those that were uh, 12 men chosen from the Lord Jesus' disciples to be apostles. Paul was chosen after Jesus had already been uh, crucified and had been resurrected. And Paul was an opponent of the gospel. He was a Pharisee. He was very zealous, and he was trying to stamp out Christianity. He thought that it was against God. He, he couldn't understand that Jesus truly was this Messiah that he was supposed to have been looking for. He, he and his uh, fellow Pharisees were the ones who were supposed to know the Old Testament law and the prophets. And they should have been the ones that would have noticed and, and seen how Jesus fit all of uh, in this way, how he um, fulfilled the law and the prophets all together, but they, they could not see because of their unbelief. However, God graciously graciously gave Paul a chance and um, the Lord Jesus met him on the Damascus road and completely changed the uh, trajectory of his life, completely changed his life's mission. And from there on, uh, Paul became a minister of the gospel. And after he met Jesus on the Damascus road, and you can read about that in Acts chapters 9, 22 and 26, um, After he did that, he went away to Arabia for a while and then started on his missionary journeys. And as I mentioned in Acts 17, it talks about him going to Thessalonica. And he went in and he uh, he taught there. And then as often happened in the places that he went, he was ran out. He was run out of town. And he went down to Berea. And then from there, I think he went on to Corinth. Um, And so he wasn't in Thessalonica for a very long time, but he was in Corinth for about 18 months. And um, these believers in Thessalonica, I love what it says in 1 Thessalonians, uh, because they believed right away. They believed the word that was given to them from Paul, that it was from God and not from man. And I love when Paul's writing to his his first letter to them, he says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 2, he says, We give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering for our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers loved by God, that he has chosen you because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. You know what kind of men we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. So they believed even though they were having difficulties, even though they were being persecuted, and um, they took the gospel as truth and they lived it out. And so um, 
Paul was very much, he very much cared for these. He cared for all the ones that he visited, but he seemed to have had just a special place um, in his heart for these Thessalonians. And when he went to Corinth, he heard that their uh, like often happened with many of the other places false teachers um were creeping in after paul and silas and timothy had gone away and paul wrote back to address some of these issues um one of the things that you'll see in first thessalonians is paul talks about how uh, the believers will be caught up with jesus when he gives that cry of command and they had been apparently taught these false teachers had said no if if some people die before the uh, before jesus comes back then they've missed out on everything and Paul was like, no, the dead in Christ will rise first. And then those who are still alive will be caught up with them and meet them in the air. And so he was encouraging them. He was um, reminding them of the hope we have in Christ and that for those who have gone on, we, we don't grieve for those as um, as ones who have no hope. We do have that hope and it's in Christ. And So he writes this letter of 2 Thessalonians back to them once again because um, those false teachers had continued to come in and teach and um, and teach something different than the gospel that Paul had brought to them that had been given to him by the Lord to bring to the people. And so uh, Paul comes back and is talking to them about that. And there was also this uh, false teaching that had crept in that just said, Uh, had told people, well, since Jesus is coming back, you don't have to work. You don't have to do anything else. You can just sit here and watch and wait. And he's like, no, you don't need to be idle. Warn people against the idleness. And so that's how this letter opens up. And um, we're going to jump in here and see what he's um, encouraging them about. He knew they were still under persecution uh, because believers were are going to be persecuted. There, uh, there is going to always be that battle of good versus evil. But, oh, we have a Savior and we have a protector and a provider. And even though we may have difficulties for a short time, he can't, uh, that old Satan, that deceiver, that um, enemy of the believers cannot have our soul. If we are, if we belong to the Lord, because we are sealed with that promised Holy Spirit, um, God's stamp of authority, His seal of authority, His seal of ownership, is on us. And so Paul wanted to remind them of this. And so let's jump in here and see what we can uh, determine leading up to our verse for the day. So let me say this also real quickly. I would encourage you to go back and read this letter of Second Thessalonians. It's very short. It's just three chapters. And so if you can read the whole letter and get the gist of what Paul was saying, he he opens up like he often does with talking of... Uh, He's giving thanks. He has a prayer for them, unlike in that letter to the Galatians where he just jumps in and just um, lets them have it from the beginning because they had just gotten way off track. Uh, But in most of his other letters, he will just, um, he tells them what he's thankful for. He prays for them. And he just jumps right in and talks about this judgment that is going to come against these false teachers and uh, those who are trying to turn believers away. And he wants to make sure that they know that there will be a time when um, there is there's going to be this man of lawlessness. Uh, he's talking a lot about end times, uh, man of lawlessness that will come in. And so he wants them to know about that. And then I want to pick up in Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13 and read forward then. So Paul has been saying these are the things that are going to happen um, but just know that it's going to be okay. You stand firm and you hold on to what you know is true and so listen to this um, in Second uh, Thessalonians two thirteen. But we ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers beloved by the Lord, because God chose you as the first fruits to be saved through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. And oh, friends, that's how all of us are saved. We are saved through faith. It's by grace. 
you have been saved through faith. It's not of your own doing. It is the gift of God. And he sanctifies us. He sets us apart. He um, makes us holy. Um, And I'm just so because of that belief, because of our faith. He does all the work. And it says in 14, to this he called you through our gospel so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers, stand firm and hold true the to, do, to the traditions that you were taught by us, either by our spoken word or by our letter. He's saying, don't forget what we told you was the truth. Um, God had given that message directly to Paul and to those who were with him. And he's like, this is the truth. And in some of his other letters, he's like, this is not man's gospel. This came from God. And I just love that. And he says in verse 16 of chapter 2, Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loved us and gave us eternal comfort and good hope through grace, Comfort your hearts and establish them in every good work and word. He's asking the Lord to comfort them and to establish them. And then we get to chapter 3. He says, finally, brother, so after all these things that Paul has said, um, and he's told them what is going to happen, uh, but encouraged them to stand firm. He says, finally, brothers, pray for us that the word of the Lord may speed ahead and be honored as happened among you. And that we may be delivered from wicked and evil men, for not all have faith. So he's like, you know, there are going to be those who act like they are believers or say they are, but they really do not have the faith. And then here's our verse for the day. He says, but the Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. Do you see that contrast that Paul does? He says, not all have faith. But who is faithful? God is. <laughs> you know, I'm so thankful that our shortcomings, our unrighteousness, and sometimes our um, unfaithfulness does not cause God's faithfulness to change. Our shortcomings do not change his holiness Our sins, our trespasses, our transgressions do not change his character. The fact that he is always faithful, that he is always good, that he is always righteous and just and merciful. And I'm so thankful for that. I am so, so thankful for that. And that's what Paul was saying here. He's like, not all have faith, but God is faithful. Don't you just love that? And then he goes on to uh, tell them he will establish you and guard you against the evil one. And that's exactly what God does. He establishes us. Let's look that up in the Greek and see what that word means. Oh, I just love this. You've got to do this, more friends, uh, because what a blessing. I want you to listen to this. If we look up that word that Paul used in the Greek for establish, it's steterizo. It means to make fast or to establish. It comes from the word sterinkis, a support that fixes or, you know, like a buttress, a support, or it plants it down. It firmly affixes it. And it says to give support, to secure, to firmly establish, to solidly plant, which eliminates the ability to vacillate. So it it is tied down. It is firmly fixed down. And that's what the Lord does to, to us. The Lord is faithful. He will establish you. He will help you to stand firm, to be planted. Um, and guard you against the evil one. That's exactly what he does. And, you know, I'm so thankful that um, when we, as I mentioned earlier in the podcast, when the Lord uh, seals us with his Holy Spirit and puts his uh his seal, his certificate of ownership on us, we, that can't be taken away by anyone else. Now, can we reject? Yes. Can we rebel? Yes. But if we are resting in that faith, in that fact, in that faith in him, that what he says he will do when he says we are saved and that we have eternal life and that he is going to help us, what he says he will do, he will do. 
And you need to just uh, park on that truth. That's why it's so important when everything around us is topsy-turvy and the winds and the waves are blowing and the um, difficulties arise. That's why it's so important for us to keep our eyes and our hearts and our minds stayed on him because he's faithful. When our eyes see things that uh, make us worry, we don't walk by uh, sight. We walk by faith. We walk by faith, trusting in the Lord in the Lord in what he said. And so when everything's falling apart, we go back to what we know is true. Go back to what you know is true, and that is God is always faithful. He is sovereign. All authority has been given to his son, and the Lord has put everything under uh, subjection to uh, to Jesus. Everything comes under his feet. All powers and rulers and principalities and authorities have to come under his subjection. Now, will we have difficulties at time and will they buffet us and sometimes cause trouble? Yes, because we're children of God. But will we be firmly established? Oh, yes. And will he guard us and guard our hearts? Yes. And sometimes for some people, that ultimate deliverance is that we go on to heaven with him. But sometimes we uh, have things that happen on this earth and people can say, oh, it was only that God got them through that. And in whatever way, God will always get the glory. But what a wonderful promise. He will guard you against the evil one. And that just makes me think about what he's done for us that Paul writes of, of over in uh, the end of chapter, I'm sorry, the end of Ephesians in chapter six of Ephesians, when he talks about that um, armor of God that the Lord gives us, he uses that to guard us. He uses uh, that on the outside and the Holy Spirit on the inside. And we just have to trust that friends but i want to close with this if you get over to ephesians chapter 6 uh, verse 10 he says finally be strong in the lord and in the strength of his might so it's not our strength it's god's strength put on the whole armor of god that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil that way we're firmly established don't you just love that for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against the rulers against the authorities against the cosmic powers over this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places therefore take up the whole armor of god that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm stand therefore having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and as shoes fitted for your feet having and put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace in all circumstances take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of the salvation the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication to that end keep alert with all perseverance making supplication for all the saints he gives us what we need he establishes us and he guards us against the evil one give him thanks and praise for that friends blessings to you until next time